The hi-hat is a good candidate to demonstrate some humanizing or variation techniques on, simply because it's such a constant element. Very often it's the glue that holds the beat together. And because the hi-hat sound is repeated and played so many times, there is a risk of it sounding static or robotic. In this video, we'll take a look at how to deal with this problem. Hello everyone, this is... If you listen to a real hi-hat, you will notice that every hit sounds slightly different. Even if you try your best, you will never be able to hit the hi-hat with exactly the same force, on exactly the same spot, or even exactly on time. There's a natural variation in there. And that's what we're trying to imitate. Let's get the most obvious one out of the way first. If your drum machine supports micro-timing, then you can manually nudge each step a tiny bit forward or backward in time to get them off the grid and make the timing less robotic. But that can be a lot of work. If your drum machine supports unquantized recording, you can simply tap in the hi-hats. This will automatically record micro-timing values into the pattern. Since you are human, by definition that will result in a humanized hi-hat timing. If it's a little too humanized, meaning your timing is too sloppy, then there are ways to solve this. Quantizing the hi-hat would reset all micro-timing values to zero. That's not what we want, since we would end up with a robotic hi-hat again. But some drum machines allow you to only partially quantize a track. This will nudge the steps back towards the grid. But not the whole way, only a certain percentage of the way. This makes the timing tighter. Another option is to reduce the tempo while you're tapping in the beat. This gives you better accuracy, and when you turn the tempo back up, it's as if you had magically become a better finger drummer. If you double the tempo, your mistakes will be half as bad. Even though your pattern might not call for any swing, a tiny amount of it will make the even steps shift ever so slightly, which can already get rid of that robotic feeling. If you don't want to have swing on the rest of your pattern, you should check if your drum machine allows you to only add swing to individual instruments. If your drum machine has an LFO that lets you target the sample start position, you can use this to add some variation to your hi-hats. The idea is that the sample is sometimes played from the very beginning and sometimes from a point close to the beginning. Your mileage may vary depending on the sample, but this will make the sample sound a little bit different each time it is triggered. Set the LFO shape to random and the LFO mode to hold. You want the LFO to choose a random value and stick with it until the next note is played. Remember this for the following tips. We'll only ever use the LFO in hold mode. Adjust the depth to taste. While this only changes how the sample sounds, one small variation of this trick will allow you to add some timing fluctuation without using micro-timing. All you have to do is prepare a copy of the sample beforehand and add a tiny bit of silence before the hi-hat. Now the LFO has some room at the beginning to move around. At this value, the hi-hat starts immediately with no delay. And at zero, the entire silent part will be played before the hi-hat. Using the LFO parameters, we can now tweak it to taste. Video games in the 90s used a technique that's also useful for drum machines. Memory was a scarce resource back then, so developers had to make the most out of what little memory they had for sound samples. Often there was just one single sample for each sound, with no variation. Each time it was played, 
They just altered the pitch a little bit by changing the playback sample rate. This keeps it from sounding too monotonous. And we can do the exact same thing with an LFO that targets the sample pitch. We could also add some variation to the end of the hi-hat. Just make sure to use a hi-hat that's not too short and clicky. There has to be enough material to work with. The 707 hi-hat will do just fine. In the kit settings, set the LFO waveform to sample and hold. That mimics what we did on the Digitakt. The LFO picks a random value and sticks with it. If you set the tempo sync to on, then the LFO speed becomes synced to the BPM of your pattern. This allows you to set an exact LFO rate of one single step. The LFO will now randomly choose a new value on every step. Every hit on the hi-hat gets a new value. Now, back in the closed hat instrument settings, we have to choose a destination for the LFO. On the Digitact we would target the amp hold time and adjust the decay to taste. But here on the TR6S, or its bigger brother, the TR8S, we can simply target the decay. Set the LFO depth to whatever sounds good to you. Another option is to automate the filter cutoff. This way, some hi-hats are brighter, while the others become a little bit more muffled. One very important part of an expressive drum track is the use of dynamics using different levels of loudness to accentuate certain parts. This is usually programmed via accents or velocities, as you saw in Drum Machine 101 Episode 2. To further add variation to that, we can add some automatic fluctuation to the loudness. Just assign an LFO to the amp volume parameter. At higher values, this is almost like a random accent generator. If you want to combine some of these techniques, you'll be running out of LFOs pretty quickly. Or maybe your drum machine doesn't have any LFOs at all. But if it supports parameter automation, you can just record these changes directly into the pattern. The random element of the LFO may be gone, but it's still much more organic than without. If you need more variation, you can always just make the pattern longer or make a copy of it with different parameter automation. The Lin LM1 was the first drum machine that used samples of an acoustic drum kit. The memory chips for the samples were very expensive, and so Roger Lin used a clever trick that allowed him to use just one single sample for both hi-hats and still make it sound slightly different each time. While the machine was on, this sample was constantly looped in the background. Triggering a closed hat would open the gate for a short time, while triggering an open hat would open the gate for a longer time. Each time a hi-hat is triggered, it sounds slightly different, because we catch it at a different point in the loop. Let's see how we can replicate that. Of course we'll need to set the play mode to forward loop, so the sample keeps looping. We can then use the amplitude hold and the K to control the volume envelope. That works pretty well. You can create short closed hats and longer open hats just by changing the envelope. But the random element is missing. The sample is always starting from the same point. If we change the sample start position, the loop simply becomes shorter. The Digitact will exclude everything from the loop that's in front of the starting point. Very good for glitchy, weird sounds, but not what we're looking for right now. I think the easiest way to solve this is to prepare a copy of the sample, which contains the sample two times in a row. This way, if the sample start point lands at the end of the first part, 
there is still enough room for one full loop. This sample is exactly that, the LM1 hi-hat two times in a row. On the digitakt, a sample length of 120 means that the whole sample is played. So, 60 means that we only play half of the sample. We play one of the two copies that are in the sample. And when we move the sample start point, the end point moves accordingly. That's exactly what we want. The digitakt always plays a full loop of the sample. We just have to make sure never to go beyond 60 with the starting point. That's the halfway mark, and after that we would shorten the loop again. Now we just have to tell an LFO to move the sample start position for us. But no more than 60. My advice would be to set the envelope so it gives you closed hats. And then parameter lock the hold and decay on any steps you want to be open hats. This way, you have the blinking as a visual indicator to keep the closed and open hats apart. Don't forget that you can copy and paste single steps. This allows you to place the open hats really fast. And no, sadly we can't just use two separate tracks for the closed and open hat, because the Digitakt has no choke groups. We have to put the closed and open hats on one single track, so they mute each other. Probability or chance is a way of telling the sequencer that a step shouldn't be played every time. The sequencer then rolls the dice, so to speak, to decide whether it should play the step or not. And you can decide the odds for each step. The default is 100%. By reducing the probability, the step is played less often. If it's an important one, you should give it a higher probability. In this pattern, I'm leaving all odd steps at 100% and I'm reducing the even ones so they just pop up every once in a while. One interesting way to bring variation into your hi-hats is polymeter. This allows you to have a different pattern length for each instrument. If you shorten only the hi-hat track by one or more steps, it will restart sooner than the rest of the pattern. There's a constant shift happening between the hi-hats and the rest of the instruments. This can be pretty hard to make out, and so it appears that the hi-hat track is constantly changing. You're probably familiar with Marvin Gaye's classic 808 track Sexual Healing. The hi-hat sounds so much more lively than on other 808 tracks, and this is due to the fact that it uses a lot of combined closed and open hats. When you program a closed hat and an open hat on the same step, you get a third kind of in-between sound, somewhat resembling the chick sound of a closing hat. Listen how much more dynamic the hi-hat gets when I add that third layer. This works on 606 style drum machines as well. We hope this video gave you a few ideas on how to bring more life into your hi-hat patterns. Don't forget you can combine a lot of these techniques, and some of them work on other drums as well. Consider supporting us on Patreon, so we can keep making these videos. We have lots of cheat sheets and drum patterns for you there, like this transcription of the drum patterns used in Princess 777 9311. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. It helps us a lot.
करने